Hi there, my name is Devin Knight, and this is part two in a series on HubSpot and Power Automate integration. So if you didn't see part one of this video, that was focused on how to create a private app with inside of HubSpot. Uh, as a reminder of what that does, that private app allows us to have secure access into the HubSpot API so we can try to push and pull data or delete data from within inside of the HubSpot database. In this second video that we're jumping into now, however, we're going to be focusing more on the Power Automate side after we do a little bit of a deeper review with inside of the HubSpot documentation. So the HubSpot documentation, which we glanced at briefly at the end of part one of this video series, we're going to look at a little bit more focus, a little bit more intentional, and that way we can understand what kind of information needs to be passed into Power Automate. So as we work within Power Automate, we're going to be using it the HTTP action with inside of Power Automate, which allows us to use that API token or the access token that's been provided to us with inside of our uh, private app. All right. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to go ahead and pull back up on my screen and I have with inside of my web browser, I'm looking at Power Automate. And so with inside of Power Automate, we're going to begin by creating a new flow and we're going to kind of hop back and forth between Power Automate and then looking at the API documentation. I do have the API documentation up here already, and I'm looking at a particular part of the API documentation which allows us to search for contacts. I want to be able to do, for example, maybe I want to pass in an email address, and I provide an email address, and then Power Automate through the API returns back which contact exists. Does one exist already with that email address, or does one not? If one does exist, then it'll tell me what the HubSpot contact ID is, if it doesn't, then that will be my indicator that maybe I need to create a new contact for this particular email address that I have passed in. All right, so this information can be really helpful to you. And what I do recommend is that you explore the documentation, test out the documentation. You'll see there's this test call section right here where you can actually pass in your API token or your access token to be able to test and validate that this is going to do what you think it's going to do. So you can certainly explore this. You'll also want to explore the parameters. Uh, there's things like filters you can pass into it. So say, for example, the example I gave you a moment ago where I want to be able to pass in an email address and know whether or not that email address already exists with inside of HubSpot, you can kind of tinker around with this a little bit to be able to find that combination of filters with inside the parameter capabilities. So there's a lot of cool stuff that you can do as you work your way through some of these features that we have here. Now, what we're going to be doing is I actually have already written a little bit of this for us, but I want to show you how I got the information that I'm going to be showing you. When you go to work with inside of Power Automate, it's going to ask you for particular things. You're going to have to provide things like the URI. The URI you'll be able to find up on the top. That is found right here, the URL here. So I need to be able to use things like the URL, which you can find right here. I also need to be able to know whether or not what kind of request I'm doing. So am I doing a get or a put or a post? And you can see right here, if I want to get a list of all of the contacts that have a particular email address, that would be considered a post here. So this actually tells me what kind of request that I'm going to do. There's some other information in here that's going to be particularly helpful for you. For example, the header section right here. That header section is something that you will also be required to plug in when you're working with inside of Power Automate. So we've gotten a few things here that you can see at the very top of this part of the documentation that we can start using with inside of Power Automate. So let's do that. Let's take what we found here so far and start to plug it in, and then we'll come back to the documentation as we find we need more information. All right, so back in Power Automate, we're going to create a brand new flow. Best practice would be I would go create a solution, and with inside of that solution, I would create these flows. But for kind of one-offs like we're doing here with a YouTube video, I'm just going to go ahead and create a new instant cloud flow. And I'm going to do a manual trigger, and I'm going to create this flow. All right, now, after I create this manual trigger, I might later decide to switch out the trigger and make it a scheduled one, or maybe I make it dependent on when a new invoice is, is closed with inside of my dynamic system. You can integrate this with any kind of trigger that you may already have with inside of your ecosystem. But we're going to stick with a manual trigger for now just because that's the easiest from a YouTube perspective to be able to get kicked off in a timely fashion. All right, so with inside of this new flow, we're going to add in a new step. And the step that we're going to be using is an HTTP step. 
All right, so you'll see there's a couple here that you can choose from. Notice down here on the bottom that this does require premium Power Automate. And I did mention that in our part one video, it's worth bringing up again, that to be able to do some of these integration steps with HubSpot, you do need to have Power Automate Premium to be able to follow along. But we're going to be selecting this action right here, the HTTP action. And this is gonna allow us to make a call to our API. There's some other ones in here that we could optionally use as well, but I'm gonna stick to the HTTP action. And here's some of the information that we found in the API documentation a moment ago. What method are we going to be using? When you hit the down arrow on method, you'll learn pretty quickly the different options that you have. Do we wanna get, put, post? And if you remember, when we looked at our API documentation, we're doing a post. It also tells you that up here as well. So we're gonna use the post method with inside of the HTTP action in Power Automate. Then we're gonna provide the URL here that we're gonna be using. That can be captured again, if I go back over to the API documentation, you can find the URL right here. So I'm gonna simply copy that URL and bring that back over to Power Automate. So I'm copying right here, I'm copying this bit of a URL, we're gonna take that back over to Power Automate. All right, so I'm gonna copy that, go back over to Power Automate and plug that in for the URL. All right, the next section here is the header section. So this is some of the information you'll need to pass into the API to, for instance, be able to authenticate to the data. This is also sometimes where you'll be able to tell what kind of content type you're working with. So how do you know what kind of header information you need to plug in here? Well, again, you go back to the API documentation and you can see there's two sections here that mention header, right here and right here. And that's what we're gonna be plugging into the header section for us. Now, the way this is gonna work is anything that you see before the colon, so there's a colon right there and there's a colon right there, the colon is what you're going to put in the left side, the enter key section right here. So for us, the enter key se section is going to be authentic, uh, authori uh, authorization, excuse me, okay? And then on the value, we're gonna be passing in the bearer token, okay? Now, again, this is something that you can find if you go back to video one or part one, I walked you through how to get the access token. That's coming into play right now because when I go back to the documentation, you'll see that you're gonna pass in the word bearer and then you're gonna plug in the access token right after that. Uh, and to save us a little time so I don't have to go back and show you again, go to part one of this video if you wanna see how I got that. I have that kind of copied on the side here. I'm just gonna paste it in. I have the word bearer and then I'm passing in my access token. Again, this access token won't be, it won't be meaningful by the time you're watching this video. You'll need to create your own. Mine will be destroyed by the time this video is released. All right, so I have my authorization. I have my bearer token. I'm gonna then also pass in the content type. That was the next part of the header that you'll find right here. So we're gonna plug in the content type and it tells us right here what the content type is supposed to be. So we'll go back over to our flow and I'll copy and paste that in there. I have it kind of on the side so I don't have to tab back and forth. I'm gonna go ahead and copy and paste that from a little note document I have. All right, so that's the beginning part. This is gonna be the information to be able to run a post, a search on the contacts to be able to return back some information. But what I wanna do is I wanna filter it to a particular column. I wanna look for one particular column, the email column and say, hey, if you have an email with a value of whatever, might maybe my email, then I wanna return back um, not only the information for that contact, but I also wanna know, did you even find something? Give me a yes or no. Did you find something from that email? If you didn't, then I wanna create the contact. If you did, then great, I want to now uh, assign a deal to that contact. There's lots of cool integrations you can do here. Now, for us, we're going to modify the body section. The body section that you see right here is again, gonna be correlated to what you find in the documentation down below where you have the filter groups. So this filter group section right here, that filter group section is where you can pass in a filter and you can say, hey, I wanna look at the email column and I only want to look for emails with the following value. And so that's what we're going to do in our example here as well. We're going to apply a filter and we want to filter based on the email column and we're looking for a particular value. So I've written this code a little bit already for you. Let me show you what it looks like. It's not really that complex, uh, but essentially what we're doing is we're looking for a particular filter. 
You'll notice we're using the operator eq for equals. There is an neq for not equals, and there's also some other ones that you can use. But we're trying to filter on the property known as email. So filter on the email where is equal to some value. So we need to pass in what is the value that we want to filter in the value section here. There is also an option where you can pass in an array of values. That property is a little bit different. Instead of the word value, you would use the word values. So there isn't a way that you can pass in an array or a list of values rather than just one email at a time like I'm about to do. Now, I've also put a limit down here on the bottom. The reason why I did that is because I only want one contact to come back. I don't want it to try and find multiple contacts and give me a list of them. I'm going to plug in an email, and I just want you to give me whatever the first contact is you find. I don't care about any others. Just give me the very first one. And so that limit one means it's only going to return back one record here. All right. Now, for me to be able to pass in an email address that I want to filter, I probably need to maybe create a variable. Maybe I can use a compose. But just for the time being here, what we're going to do is I'm going to go to the top of our uh, uh, flow. And I could go into even the trigger if I wanted to. But I'm going to add a new step right here. And I'm going to create this as an initialize variable step. Okay, And in this variable, we're going to call this str for string email address. And we'll change the data type here to make it a string data type. Okay, And I could even, I'm probably going to hard code this in for now, but just know, of course, it's a variable. You can pass values into it. I'm going to plug in my email address at PragmaticWorks. Yes, that's my actual email address. If you email me, that's fine. Uh, but I'm going to plug in my email address here, and then I'm going to use that to be able to pass in the value into my API call. Now, best practice, really, I should go through and rename all of these actions. Right now, I'm not following very good best practices. I should come through and rename these and call this something like my email address variable, uh, right? Oh, sorry, I hit the mic there. Uh, I could go and rename each of these. I can go and rename my HTTP action and say search for contact, right? Let's follow some best practices here. But then now what I want to do is I want to pass into the value section here that new variable that I just created. So in the value section, I want to say, look for this particular email address that's found in the variable. That's when you're going to use and leverage dynamic content. So if I put my mouse, let's zoom in on this a little bit. If I put my mouse in between the double quotes that you see here, by the way, again, I got all this from the HubSpot documentation. I can then go pass in my variable that's behind my head here. I can pass in my variable that I created just a moment ago. And if I select that, it'll pass in the variable into my API call. All right, So it's all kind of coming together here. Dynamic content as well uh, with some of the API call information. And what's really cool, after we go ahead and rename this, let's go ahead and rename this something like HubSpot. API call, and we'll call it contacts. But now I can actually test this out. And if I go ahead and hit save, we'll save our flow, and we'll give it a run, we'll be able to see, am I able to find dknight at pragmaticworks.com? I tell you what, we, we better find it. So let me go ahead and hit test. I'm going to run a flow test, manual test. All right, so we'll hit run flow. And once we do that, sorry, it was behind my head. You couldn't hear, see me hitting the run flow button, but you'll see here that it ran successfully. It got my email variable. It passed my email variable into the HTTP connector. And if I expand that, what we should find is that it ran my API call. It found a total of one value. Let me zoom in on this so you can see this a little better. So it found one value here. That's perfect. I told it to limit to one. And if I scroll down here a little bit, you can see it passed in my email address, was able to pull back my first name. It also brought back the HubSpot object ID. I'll show you where that kind of interconnects into HubSpot here in just a moment. It shows you with the last modified date, the la my last name associated, any kind of other information about my contact, at least at a high level here. So really cool. We were able to pass in a simple email address into HubSpot using Power Automate, and we got back some information. Now. Uh, this HubSpot object ID, if you want to validate that this did this correctly, what you can do is you can grab this HubSpot object ID, go back over to HubSpot, and I might do this on the other screen here for a moment just so that you don't get too much information here. But if I go back over to HubSpot, 
and I go log in and search for that particular HubSpot ID, it should pull back my contact. Check it out. All I did was I searched for that HubSpot ID. There's my contact right there. And it does indeed tie back to HubSpot. And again, think about the ways you can use this. There's a couple of ways to think about this. HubSpot obviously has some integration built in and it's designed to be able to move data back and forth from certain systems, but it has some flaws, flaws here and there. It's not perfect. And so if you needed the ability to expand on what those built-in integrations can do, you can build some Power Automate flows to be able to manage that for you. So in this video, what we showed you was taking the private app that was created in part one video, and we now used it in part two video to actually make an API call using Power Automate. Our flow did run once we ran it. We were able to bring back some information about this particular contact. I passed in even a filter. We filtered based on the email address. And then based on that, it returned back a particular contact. Very cool. And then now we can use this to say, oh, this contact already exists. We want to assign this deal, the sales deal, to that particular opportunity. Or maybe the contact doesn't exist already and we want to create it. So some really neat ways you can think about where to go with this next. Now that's it for this video. Again, don't forget to like and subscribe these videos to make sure that you can continue to get information and content like this for free. Thank you so much for watching today. We look forward to catching back up with you in a future video. Take care.